Good afternoon, my fellow engineers. Um, this is the second video in the basic solar edge pack today. Um, and in this video, we're going to be introducing ourselves to creating our first part. Now, in this video, we're going to be making a uh, a table all from one part. Now, in, in reality, in the real in the real world, you would make it from multiple parts. You would make um, certain panels and then you'd screw them all together. But just to get a, a general idea of how the uh, solid edge system works today, we're gonna we're gonna make a table um, all from one solid part. Um, so uh, if you recall from the last video, we uh, we just had a very very quick overview uh, of what solid edge can do. Um, and you you may remember that um, if we wanted to make something from a part, we would have to click on uh, isometric part. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and if you remember from the last video, my, my, my default is set to synchronous, but we're going to be using ordered at all times in these videos. So we've got to go ahead and click transition to ordered if you're in synchronous. If it says ordered here, or if it says ord ordered part up here, you're fine. But if you're in synchronous, right click and then transition to ordered. Okay. And now it should look a little bit something like this. So the um the table that we're going to be creating today, um I'll just uh I'll just show you the uh, schematics of it a little bit. So it's, we're going to be making this uh, this table, and this this picture this here has been made using the Solid Edge draft file system, um, which we're going to be making we're going to be using later on. Uh, not in this video, in a couple of videos time. Today we're just going to be uh, using the extrusion and cut commands to make this object. But this is the uh, the dimensions of the table. So. Um, as you can see, it's uh, uh, to, to give it a general idea, the uh, the top panel is 440 by 440, which is 20 mil thick. Uh, this middle section here, like that, is a uh, 660 minus 60, so it's 600 milliliters millimeters uh, tall, um, and it's 400 by 400 uh, uh, square. The legs stick out uh, 60 millimeters in uh, depth, and they're 40 by 40 square. Uh, uh, square um, area legs, and then we, then that's all going to be made from extrusion. And then our cut, we're going to cut into these um these two sixty by three sixty and two sixty by three sixty again um, shelves. So we're going to have this middle shelf um, here. So we've got space here, and we've got space here, and then we've got a slightly protruded worktop as well, um, just to make the table round off a bit. And then it's got these four legs like that. Okay. And as I said, this this uh, this file here, this uh, image has been made. Using the solid edge draft file, which we're going to be looking at in uh, lesson lesson four or five. So if we go back to our uh, we go back to our solid edge part now. Again, just making sure that we're in order. So what we need to do to get started, we're going to make that middle section. Um, and you may remember last video we uh, briefly discussed what extrude and cut do. Um, to do, to uh, to make sure that um, to, to to start the program to start um, this process, we're going to go ahead and Click on cut, on extrude, sorry, on this, this one here. And the first thing you've got to do is you've got to select a plane. Now, um, a plane is basically, uh, it's like a, it's a 2D um, environment, in a, it's a 2D uh, section in a 3D environment. So if you just click on base reference planes here, you'll understand what I mean. So we've got this 3D XYZ um, Cartesian plane, the uh, coordinate system, and then the planes are the ZY in this case, the XZ and the um, XY uh, planes. So these are the um, the representations, the 2D representations of the 3D surface. So we're going to go ahead and click on the uh, top XY plane. Now what this has done, this has taken us into the uh, the, the um, section where we can d just uh, define what the extrusion cutout, or the extrusion length is going to be like. So if you remember from the last video, the extrusion was simply you make a, a 2D uh, shape um, and then you lengthen it. So if you wanted to make a cylinder, you draw a circle and then you'd extrude it upwards. If you wanted to make a, pent uh, a pentagonal um, section, you'd make a pentagon uh, five-sided shape and then you'd extrude it upwards. If you wanted to make a cuboid, you'd make a square or rectangle and you'd extrude it upwards. And you could do it for all sorts of shapes. You know that That's how you'd start making a screw, which is basically a cylinder with a tap in it. Um, and so on. So we're going to make our middle section of our table first of all, without the cutouts this is. And as I said, we're on this plane here, and you may remember from the last video that this point um, is, uh, it's kind of like the centre of our uh, of our um, part. Now we don't have to use this point at any point, uh, but we are going to use it because it's a nice, uh, it's a nice part, uh, it's a nice place to start, and this will represent the centre point of our part. 
So if you click on the center point, you will see that your, um, but this was um, on the rectangle by center. Um, we can start, uh, we, we've got this now rectangle with um, these dynamic dimension changes. So if you remember from the uh, schematic, it was a 400 milliliter by 400 millimeter uh, square uh, section. So we're going to do 400 by 400. So that's obviously made a really big part, but we're just going to scroll out. So now we can see that. And we want it to be, we don't want it to have any funny angle, so we're just going to do a nice flat angle like that. Okay, so that's what it's, that's the, and we're going to use this, uh, this square shape here, and we're going to extrude it upwards, or we're going to extrude it downwards. Okay, and that's all we need to do for this section here. Okay, now this, this part, now because this, everything happens in a, um, in a set, uh, in like a rule of um, sets, you know, um, set of rules. So we, the first step was to select a plane. The second step was to create the, um, the pattern that we're going to extrude. This uh, third and final step is um, how much we want to extrude it by and in what direction. So we're going to extrude it upwards. And if you remember from the schematic, it was 600. And this here is your distance. So we're going to set it to, we're going to type in 600 and then press enter. It will enter the units for me automatically. Okay, and now it's going to either go upwards or downwards at 600 millimeters. Okay, so if we, if we uh, select this to go upwards, we now have a 400 by 400, 600 mil, uh, millimeter tall uh, box. And uh, just to confirm that, um, we're going to be using the extruding cut later on again, but I, I promised in the last video that we'd look at dimensions. So if you select a uh, smart dimension and you select an edge, it will tell you the length of that edge. So it's 600 millimeters tall by 400 millimeters wide by 400 millimeters long, like so. Okay. And uh, for, as I said from the last video as well, the, uh, the select tool allows you to select components. So we can ex either select this feature, which is a protrusion, or we can even select the dimensions. Um, and we can uh, we can manipulate those in a sketch environment, or we can uh, simply just uh, delete them or create them in the uh, environment. So we're going to get rid of these sketches, just these um, dimensions, just for now. Um, you also might remember from our last video that we had uh, in the view section, we've got um, these different views. Just to stabilize the view a little bit, so that it, it looks a little bit better, we're going to go down to this one. And we're going to press an ISO view, so that we've got a better understanding of what the table will look like. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make that surface on the top. Uh, if you remember from the surface on the top, it was a 400, 400, 450, 440 by 440 uh, square 20 mil extrusion surface. So we're going to click click on the top plane of that that's uh, square using the extrusion command again. And again, we're going to select the rectangle by center. And if you remember, the reason we chose the center point last time is because now the center point, which is in the center of this square, is going to be the center point of the top surface as well. So that was our 400 by 400 plane, but we want 440 by 440. So we're going to type in 440 by 440. Okay, and again, you can rotate it as much as you want to, to, to uh, you know, to make it stick out in that because it's an extrusion. But we obviously want it to be uh, f uh, flush, and in this sense, we, you know, we want it to be um, parallel. So we're going to make this 440 surface. And if you recall again, then this is complete. This is all we need to do for this section. So we're going to close that sketch. And we're going to extrude it upwards by, by uh, 20 millimeters. So it looks like that. Okay. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like the, the table. Okay. The last thing, well, the, the next, uh, well, the last extrusion that we're going to be making are the, the legs at the bottom. So if we uh, again go on the extrusion command, and this this will now show you um, how, that you can make multiple extrusion extrusions that aren't connected together as one feature. So we're going to make a rectangle, but this time we're not going to make a rectangle by center. If you click on that drop down arrow, you can choose a rectangle by center, which is what we've been using, a rectangle by two points, which is what we will be using, a rectangle by three points just allows you to um, select the three vertices in, uh, in, independently. And a polygon by center allows you to to make stuff like pentagons and hexagons. Uh, so, so we're going to be using the rectangle by two points. So if you select that, 
it, it looks very similar to the uh, rectangle by center, but this time, instead, if you if you watch in this space here, if I click now, and then it keeps that point fixed, and I change the dimensions like that. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we want obviously the table legs to be flush for this wall and this wall here. So we're going to select this point so that at all times the uh, at least part of the table, you know, the, these two edges of the table legs are going to be the same. And if you remember from the schematic, we want it by 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter um, wide in length. So we're going to make 40 by 40. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and do that four times. Okay, so we've got that, and now we're going to do our closed sketch, and then we're going to extrude it down by 60 millimeters in the same fashion as before. Sorry, that's just the fan of my computer being a bit loud. Okay, and then that's the same way, but obviously we're extruding it downwards this time as opposed to upwards as before. So now, it will look a lot like the, uh, the table in the schematic, but finally what we need to do is we need to introduce these two cuts here. So what we're going to do, we're going to not use the extrude, we're going to use the cut command. We're going to collect, uh, connect to our, our face. In the exact same way as extrusion, we're just going to um, do... Well, in fact, I'll tell you what. In the exact same way as extrusion, we're going to have to make a cut that we're going to effectively extrude down in the invisible X plane in this direction. We're going to extrude it into the page, or out of the page, in this case into the page, because this is our surface. Um, and we're going to we're going to use some uh, some uh, referencing to uh, help us uh, make sure that the these cuts are in the right position. So what you'll be able to see is on these lines you can select the midpoint or the endpoint. Uh, these are key features, key characteristics of the line. So if you select the midpoint here and the midpoint down here, which will be the center. Okay. So now we've got this line. And this line, this line's midpoint is obviously different to this line's midpoint because this has got the extra six, 60, uh, 60 millimeters there. So if you make this midpoint go across, like so, okay. And then finally, well not finally, but next we're going to be using the uh, trim command, which a trim command basically just allows you to cut out um, a section of a line. So this was originally just one long line. Now we're going to cut it there, so we've just got the half the line and that line that we drew. We're going to uh, choose the rectangle by center. Now if you remember the dimensions of the uh, cutouts were 260 by 360, so we're going to select uh, 260 by 360. And we need to rotate this by 90 degrees. Okay. And then we can go ahead and draw that line back in, and we're going to use this section. And we're going to make 260 by 360. And we're going to rotate it round by... Like so. And now, we need, we need these rectangles here, these rectangles, and we need this rectangle here. But we don't need these lines. These lines will uh, will confuse the cutting command. So we need to go ahead and just using the delete command, the delete button, we're just going to go ahead and delete these lines. Okay. So there we have it. That, this is this is our uh, the um, the area that we're going to be cutting. So if we uh, close this, and in the exact same way as extrusion, we're just going to um, effectively drag it backwards, and it will cut into our shape. Okay. So it will allow you to cut through a shape. Now if we go ahead and uh, select um, a point that we want it to cut to, 
because we can just keep cutting it through, but we only need to, to cut to, the, to a certain point. So if you select the, um, if you, it doesn't really like lines, but you can make it select, uh, cut to a certain point. And obviously we can't use this point because this is, uh, 20 mil too far because it sticks out by 20 mil on either side. But you can use this point because it, um, it's, uh, aligned. And then that cutting, that cutting tool, we can just press finish here. That cutting tool has now made us a cut for a nice table. So you can look at it nice symmetric and that's how our table will look. And this is all one part and that's, Generally, that's actually bad in engineering practice to make a big table as one part because it implies that it's made out of a solid piece of wood. But um, we're going to be uh, we're going to be making it out of, a, of an assembly in the next video. Okay. I'll see you guys in the uh, in the next video.